Hi everyone, Pete here, and welcome to this video about 3D trigonometry. This is one of the hardest topics within trigonometry, however the methods for doing the questions are very similar, and there's some basic principles that we'll keep referring back to, which I'll explain at the beginning of this video. For this particular topic we're going to need to use a little bit of our imagination to try and visualise 3D objects or diagrams when they're drawn in two dimensions on our exam paper. So here I have a plane ABCD, and we've got to imagine that this occupies 3D space. One of the things we need to be able to identify is the angle between a line and a plane. So if on the diagram I draw on this yellow line, I need to be able to figure out where to draw the angle between this line and the plane. We start off with the point that is above the plane, and we're going to drop a perpendicular line downwards towards the plane. Imagine gravity pulling this point downwards onto the plane. The line that the point travels through is going to be the perpendicular line. So on my diagram, it looks something like this. This cross here is where this point would drop and hit my plane. Now that we have our perpendicular line downwards, we can find the other point on the line which is on top of the plane already. We're now going to connect this blue point with the cross that we drew earlier. This blue line shows us the shadow of the yellow line positioned on the plane. So if we imagine a light source right above our diagram shining downwards, this blue line is what the shadow of the yellow line would look like. Once we have these two things on the diagram, we're now able to find the angle between the line and the plane. The angle that we're looking for is this red angle here, connecting our yellow line and its shadow on the plane. So if you're asked to find the angle between a diagonal line to a plane, this is how we would do it. One thing to note is that this triangle made up by our yellow line, its shadow, and the perpendicular line downwards is a right angle triangle. So we will always have a right angle between the shadow and the perpendicular line downwards. Let's look at a question that utilises this idea of having a line making an angle with a plane. To begin with, this question is asking us to find the length of DB. It's important to note that this is a cuboid. The rectangle ABCD has four right angles in its corners. However, because these diagrams are drawn in three dimensions, Sometimes it's hard to tell if an angle is right angle or not. So let's just mark on what we know. We know that BCD is a right angle. We also know that the length BC should be the same as the length AD. So we can mark that this is three centimeters as well. Now BDC is in fact a right angle triangle. However, on the diagram, it doesn't quite look like one. So if we're struggling to visualize it, yet we know that BCD is a right angle, we can just do a quick sketch on the side, and this will help us visualize what is going on in this particular section of the question. Now that we have our right angle, we can see that we're asked to find the third missing side when we've already been given two of the sides of the right angle. This question is going to then utilize Pythagoras. So we can do three squared plus 10 squared is going to be equal to our missing side length x squared. And if we solve this by square rooting both sides and placing the left hand side in the calculator, we would find that x is equal to the square root of 109. So now that we've found the length of db, let's make sure we remember that that was db that we found. Let's put a little marker down there. We're now going to be looking for the length of dg. Now dg is this diagonal that goes up through our cuboid. We can see though, that there is already a perpendicular line drawn downwards for us. If we took the uppermost point of this line and drew the perpendicular line downwards till it reached the base, we would actually be drawing the line GB. We can see that the position of the line DG on the plane of the base is D. So connecting the perpendicular line and the point D is this line DB. As we said before, a right angle is formed between the shadow at the base and the perpendicular line upwards. So DBG is also going to be a right angle. 
We've just worked out the length of DB, so let's mark that on. If we're struggling to see that this is a right angled triangle, or we're struggling to figure out how to use Pythagoras or trig, we can always do a quick sketch on the side. So we're going to draw on DBG. We know that the base length is root 109. Then we know that BG must be the same as HC because we have a cuboid, so this must be 5 centimeters. Now that we have two sides of our right angled triangle, we know that we can use Pythagoras to find the third. And if we solve that, we will find that DG is equal to the square root of 134. So this question shows us that we can use Pythagoras in objects that are three-dimensional, not just two-dimensional triangles. As long as we can find right angle triangles inside of our cuboid, we're allowed to use Pythagoras. In the next part of this question, we're asked to find the angle between DG, this diagonal going up through the cuboid, and the plane, or the base of this cuboid, ABCD. We've already discussed that the right angle is formed between the shadow of the line DG and the perpendicular line upwards. Once we've got the shadow, we know that we can also draw on the angle between the line and the plane. That would be this angle here. Let's mark this on our own diagram on the right. So we're looking for the angle GDB. Now we have a right angle triangle, so we can see we've got the opposite of that angle and the adjacent of that angle. That means we're going to need to use tan. So let's write down the equation for tan. Now let's substitute in the side lengths that we know, do the inverse tan of both sides, and solve to find this angle. And we would find that the angle between DG and the plane is 25.59 degrees. So after going through that example, there are some key points that we can take away when we're solving problems in three dimensions. One of the first things that we can do is sketch our own right angle triangles to represent some of the triangles that we might see inside of the 3D diagram. It's very hard for us to use trigonometry and Pythagoras properly when we don't have a nice right angle triangle drawn in front of us. By sketching your own triangle, you can then label the correct angle that you're looking for, you can label the right angle, and you can also label the opposite, hypotenuse and adjacent, so that we won't mess up when we use trigonometry. The next point is that we should be keeping our answers exact until we're giving our answers at the final stage. In the previous question, I kept all of my answers as certs. Those are exact answers. If you round these answers too early and then need to use them later, you might get the answer incorrect. So to avoid errors in rounding, keep all of your answers exact until the final step in which the question might ask you to round to a certain number of significant figures or decimal places. Let's take a look at this example here. We are given that this is a regular pyramid with a square base, we can also see that V, the vertex, is 12 centimeters above the midpoint or the center of our base. For a regular pyramid, the vertex at the top will always be above the center of our base. If it's directly above the center of the base, that means we would create right angles between these diagonals WY and ZX and our vertical line going upwards. So we would create four right angles between those diagonals on the base and this vertical line going upwards. The first question asks us to find the length of Vx. We can pluck out already a right angle triangle that includes Vx. We said that the shadow of the line Vx directly below, which would be Ox, and the perpendicular line upwards would form a right angle. So we can do a quick sketch of that right angle on the side. We can see that VO is 12 centimeters and VOX is a right angle, and we're looking for VX over here. However, we don't have any other information about this triangle yet, so we need at least one other piece, either an angle or a side, in order to work out VX. So in this case, the easiest piece of missing information to find would be OX. We're not given any other angle information in the question, but we do have some sides on the base that we could work with. That is why I'm going to choose to look for OX. Now, if we connected O to the midpoint of WX as such, we would find that this is also a right angle. Now we can do a quick sketch of the triangle that we have just formed, where we have O to the midpoint to X, 
we know that m to x is going to be half of wx, so we can label this 5 over 2. We also know that o to m is parallel to x to y, and so om is also half of xy. So we can label on that om is also 5 over 2. Now that we have this right angle omx, we can use Pythagoras to solve for ox. We find that x is going to be 5 root 2 over 2. So now we can label that on our diagrams. This diagonal ox is going to be 5 root 2 over 2. That means in the left hand diagram, ox of course takes the same value. And now that we have two values inside of our left hand triangle, we have two side lengths, we're going to be able to use Pythagoras to find that third missing side length. And if we use Pythagoras to solve for vx, we will find that the final length is 12.5 centimeters. In the previous part of the question, we worked out that the length of vx was root 626 all over 2. I converted that into a decimal to give an answer in the previous part, but you can see that I've kept the exact answer because I'm going to need this line again in my working out. So now I'm asked to find the angle between vx and the base of my pyramid. We've already discussed that the perpendicular line downwards is v to o, this line here, and the shadow of vx then on the base is going to be x to o. So we know that the angle is between the line and its shadow, so we'll be looking for this angle here, vxo. We can draw this triangle down on the right hand side in order to visualize it better. So I've labeled this triangle with the information that I know already. We know that VO is 12 centimeters, and from the previous part of the question, we worked out the length of VX. I've also labeled VXO the angle that we're looking for. Remember, once we've got an angle in question, we can label the sides of our right angle triangle and use trigonometry. So opposite the angle, we have 12, and the hypotenuse VX, we also have the value for. So using the opposite in the hypotenuse, I know that I'm going to use sine, substituting and rearranging for theta, placing this right-hand side into my calculator in one step, and rounding to three significant figures, my answer is 73.6 degrees. The final part of this example is asking us to find the area of one of the slanting faces of our pyramid, WVX. Let's just draw out this triangle on the right so we can visualize it a bit better. Let's write down some of the things we already know about this triangle. We know Wx is five centimeters, and from the previous parts of the question, we know that Vx is the square root of 626 all over two. So now we have these two pieces of information, how can we find the area of this face? Well, this is a non-right angle triangle, so we could use the area rule, However, we would need an angle sandwiched between these two sides, so we would need vxw, this angle, and we don't have that. So we could divide this triangle into two right angle triangles. We know that the midpoint of wx is where this yellow line crosses it, so from that midpoint to x we would have 2.5 centimeters. So now that we have this base length of 2.5, we can use Pythagoras to find v down to the midpoint m. Let's rearrange and solve for x in this case. We would find that x is root 601 over 2. Note that I'm keeping this as an exact answer for now. Now that I have the height of my triangle, I know that the base length of the whole face is 5 centimeters, not the 2.5 that we found earlier. So using the height and the base, I can just do a half base times height to work out the area of W, V, X, this triangle. So now I can round this to a decimal. So to one decimal place or three significant figures, I have 30.6 centimeters squared as my final answer. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.